most women do not know this about men. My name is Olushegun Mokuolu. You know, I realized that just as men misunderstand women, women have a lot of misunderstanding about men. And many women suffer as a result of this misconception about a man. Now, let me quickly make this clarification. There are two kinds of men on that, just two. The new creation man and the old man. In other words, the born again man and the man that is not born again. Many of the understanding that women have of men comes from their knowledge of the man that is not born again. Now, I'm not talking about religious people because I hear somebody says, well, I know this pastor who is like this. I know this preacher who is like this. Being a pastor, being a preacher doesn't make a person born again. But let me just highlight some of these things that many women do not understand about men. Number one, most men, now you will understand the kind of man I'm talking about, the natural man, the man that is not born again, the, the act of just being a man. That's the kind of man I'm describing. In the end, I'm going to talk about this other man. Most men are driven by lust. You see, lust is a common thing among human beings, whether male or female. Loss for things, loss for power, loss generally speaking. But when it comes to sexual lust, it is very prevalent with men. You see, women are mostly moved or live by emotions. Now, when I say things like this, I'm not being absolute. I'm just taking what is most common what is general, generally observable. You see, men are driven by lust. The implication of this is that the relationship of men, the pursuit of relationship by men, has sex as the undertone. Now, you as a woman, if you don't understand this, you can even misunderstand and interpret wrongly. A man that is driven by lust as a man that is driven by love. Lust is the driving force behind most men, particularly when it comes to relationship with the opposite sex. That's why there's this general belief that a man is moved by what he sees. But I want to ask you, why is a man moved by what he sees? Is because the man is driven by lust. You remember the scripture talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It says, love not this world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that are in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, they are not of God, but of the devil. So men that are moved by lust of the eyes are driven strongly by lust and you know women even feed this lust by wanting to present their body as a fuel to feed that lust you see what you are feeding is not love is lust so you are providing your body as a fuel for lust but you think that it is for love most men are driven by that. So when they come into relationship, it is lust that drives it. And that's why there is always the pressure to want to have sex. That's why the man always just want to have sex. Now for you as a woman, you are thinking of, let's take time. Let's build this relationship. You know, it shouldn't just be physical. But for the man, it's mostly about physical. The earlier you understand it, about a man, the better. Men get tired after having sex with you. <laughs> this is so true. Men get tired 
after having sex with you. What do I mean by that? They get tired of you. The natural man may bond with you for a while. But you see, when sex is involved, after some time, he gets tired of you. The reason is that sex, that sex is driven by lust. When lust is fully satisfied, there is a dissatisfaction in the end with the object of that lust. So you remember the son of David? He was in love with Tamar, the, son, the daughter of David. The scripture used the word love. It says he loved her so much that he became sick. But eventually he slept with her. And the scripture also says he hates her far more than he loved her at the beginning. That is a man for you. You know, you need to understand this as a woman. Once the man has sex with you, after a while, you know, he gets tired of you. So you have a scenario where you are in a relationship, you are having sex, the relationship is prolonged. After a while, the guy is tired of you. You are no more, you, you no longer drive his lust. There's nothing about you again. Now, this guy is seeing somebody else that is driving his lust. So before you blink, he's moved to that other person. That is a man that is driven by lust. Most men, pay attention to this, most men get easily tired of marriage. Because most men are not brought up to understand marriage from a biblical perspective. Uh, they, they easily get tired of marriage because marriage, marriage is work. Marriage is responsibility. Somehow, by, by natural design, women have resilience. Women is like they are made for marriage. A woman, even her body, she has to take pregnancy for nine months. That's a preparation. The man doesn't know anything like that. He just has sex and he goes his own way. The woman takes in. So many things start to change about her body. She can't sleep the way she likes for that period of nine months. So many things. She has to endure this. Caution what she eats. Even her treatment has to be carefully measured and so on. And then when the child comes, she has to breastfeed, spend sleepless nights, change diapers and so on. Marriage sort of make a woman to become responsible. It's not so with a man. Marriage does not make a man responsible. Many women don't know this. Even till today, they think, okay, maybe if he has a, if I could have a child for him, he will become responsible. Maybe when we get married, he will change. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Marriage does not make a man responsible. A man who is not responsible outside of marriage will not become responsible in marriage. Or will not become maritally responsible. Because there are some men, they are responsible in certain areas of their life. But they are not responsible when it comes to marriage. So marriage does not make a man to become responsible. So he, he easily gets tired of marriage. He is like, because he, he, he has to settle into a routine and a kind of life that is like, what the trouble is this? I know men who got married and before you know it, they just got tired of the whole thing. That's a man. That's a man for you. But you see, you as a woman, you are thinking this thing is going to be long lasting. You're going to be together. And so he is not thinking like that. So you need to know how to find a man that understands the responsibility of marriage. And I'm going to talk about this kind of man at the end of this discussion. The next thing is that you can't change a man. <laughs> Most women think they can change a man. You see, you can have sort of impact, impression upon a man within a short period. But essentially, a man will not change because of a woman. It is only God that changes a man. It is only the Holy Spirit that can change a man. You can't change a man. Women keep saying things like, I don't know what else to do again. I've tried it. I'm like, it's not going to work. You can't change him. You can't change him. And even God, even with God, it takes time. That's why you say, oh, I've been praying. Nothing has happened. I'm frustrated. So you think that you can just pray. You will just pray and then he will just change just like that. If that is how it works, he will have changed before you even met him. Because God wants him saved 
and change all along. So he will have even changed before you met him. You can't change a man. Please get this into your heart. If a man is not right, don't go into marriage with that man because you can't change him. Don't think that I'm go he is going to change. That's another thing. One, you think you can change him. The second thing is that he is going to change. If there is a character in a man that is not compatible with marital life, don't go and marry that man thinking that he is going to change. That marriage is going to change him. Marriage doesn't change anybody. A man that will be responsible will be responsible with or without marriage. So don't think that marriage will change him. Don't think that he will change. Don't think that you can change him. Uh, you also need to know this, that a man does not leave a woman because of another man, another woman. A man does not leave a woman because of another woman. <laughs> now, you will be one you say, but he left me for this woman. No, he didn't leave you for that woman. He left you because he doesn't want you. You see, that's the truth. You see, the other woman is not the problem. The man is the problem. The man knows what he's doing. A man does not leave you because he has found another woman. A man leaves you because he feels you are not right for him. Or because he doesn't want you. Or because he's tired of you. It has to do with him. It has nothing to do with that other woman. So please understand this. A man does not leave you because of the other woman. He leaves you because he does not uh, want you. Then a man can be nice, yet extremely wicked. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you hear about um, a cocaine pusher in Colombia in those days? I just don't want to mention his name. And many drug pushers, they are like that. This man will kill those they consider opponent or enemies painfully, wickedly. Yet, he was so protective of his family. He was so protective of his children. In fact, he was eventually killed because he could not resist talking to his family. A man can be nice, yet extremely wicked. Most of the women today that are suffering in marriage, that have terrible husband, they didn't marry terrible husband. You think, you think if that man was that terrible, they would marry him? They had nice moments. They had moments when that man looks like the prince of prince. But wickedness is in his heart. Why? You see, Jesus talked about this. We just don't pay attention to it. He said, you being evil know how to give good gift to, me, to, your, to your children. The man is evil, but yet he can do some good things. Now, the problem is this. Women interpret those good things to mean that the man is good. The act of a man does not completely reveal the man. A man can be nice in a season. And that's why you need to be careful of a man that is just nice to you, but wicked to everybody. This man is mean. He's callous to others. But when it comes to you, he's so nice. In marriage or eventually, he will show you that other side also. So a man can be nice, a man can be caring, but extremely wicked. He can be a terror, a terrorist in marriage. So you've got to be careful and, and know this. Family life doesn't make a man responsible. I, I said something about that earlier. Family life does not make a man to be maritally responsible. It is understanding that makes a man to be responsible. A man that will be responsible, we have certain understanding. He will have a way he processes thoughts, events. He will have an understanding of what marriage is. Who a woman is. Did you know the Bible said that husband dwell with them with knowledge? I've had some uh, ignorant teachers in the world say that, oh, there is no way you can live with a woman. The Bible says, dwell with her with knowledge. There is a knowledge that a man must have to make his marriage to work, to live joyfully with the wife of his youth. So it's not family life that is going to make him responsible. It is his understanding of marriage. 
a man that thinks that a woman is just uh, a property. And let me say this. There are two kinds of women, men, when it comes to marriage. There's a man that wants to marry you. There's a man that wants to own you. The majority of men in the world, they want to own you. Very few want to marry you. You see, it is only those who understand marriage from a scriptural perspective that want to marry you. Most men in the world, they want to possess you. That's why you say, oh, men are very possessive. They want to have you. You see, that's why a man feels that he needs money to marry. Whereas, money can never marry for you the right woman. Only God can lead a man to the right woman. But most men think if they have money, they can marry the woman they want. The reason is that they are not seeking to marry. They are seeking to own the woman. Now, when you own something, it becomes your property. You can do and undo. That's not marriage. Marriage is not owning another person. Marriage is becoming one with another person. It's different. So you must, you must understand this. Most men, I said, most men want sex outside marriage. Not because we are not good enough, but because they are driven by lust. Most men, they want sex outside marriage. If I could almost tell you that every man, apart from a man that Christ is truly dwelling in his heart, will commit adultery. Either in heart or in the act. Either in his heart or on, on a bed. Every natural man will commit adultery. He, you see, it, it, it's not because your sex is not good enough. It's not because your sex is not satisfying enough. It is the same thing that another woman will give him. The problem is that he's driven by lust. You see, lust is blinding. Lust does not make a man to think correctly. Lust is like, lust works like alcohol. It's like when a man is drunk, he will misbehave. It is when that uh, alcohol wears down in his body that he comes back to his senses. It's like a man under drug. A man that is driven by lust is a man that is addicted. It's like a man that is addicted to a drug. You know, it is until that thing wears down that he gains himself. So most men would commit adultery. That's the truth. Most men. But you see, women think that, you know, when we get married, he will settle down. I've seen women, they know this man is fornicating. But they think that when he's when they marry him, he will now settle down. Some they are even fornicating with the man. They are fornicating with the man. You now, when you now get married, you as a woman, you see, that's the issue. Majority of women, I'm not saying women don't commit adultery, women do also. But you see, marriage makes a woman becomes responsible, and some things are not even easy for a woman to do in marriage. So a woman gets married and she feels that now I'm married to my husband. Let me just take with this man. The man doesn't see it like that. He wants to go out. You see, it's not that you are not good enough, but lust is unsatisfiable. Is it sexual need, sexual passion can be met in marriage, but sexual lust cannot be satisfied by marriage. So no, no matter what you do for him on the bed, no matter what the two of you do together, by the time he sees another woman, his eyes is shining again. He's beginning to say to himself that this one, her breast is bigger than my wife. It may, it, it, it may taste better. This one, the way I'm seeing her hips is straight. My, my wife is cough. I think this one will have something better. That is how lust works in the mind of a man. And lust is the works of the flesh. You remember Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. He said, these are the lust of the works of the flesh, which are manifest. Adultery, fornication, lavishiousness, etc. And he concluded by saying, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. A man can hate you for no reason. <laughs> a man can hate you for no reason. Did you know Jesus said something? He said they hated me for no reason. That's in the Bible. Men operate like that. You see, I've seen married women that tells me, sir, I, I don't know what is wrong, 
We have no fight. We have no quarrel. Have not done anything. He's just behaving somehow. He's withdrawn. He doesn't sleep in the same room with me. He doesn't do this. We I just I'm tired. I don't know what happened. A man can hate you for no reason. It's not you. It's him. He is the problem, not you. So he can hate you for no reason. Understand that. A man without Jesus living in his heart. I'm not saying a church goer. I'm not saying somebody that claimed to be a child of God. I'm talking of a man that is truly spirit-filled man. Who is a child of God? He is the one that will not hate. Because hatred is murder. A man can find you to become irritating to him. You see, when he was seeing you, he sees you as that beautiful damsel. But when he gets married to you, he knows where you soak your stained pants in the bathroom. He sees that. He knows when you are menstruating. He sees you when you go to the toilet. You know, he sees you in your basic elements. That could make him to find you irritating. Whereas he's seen other women outside, even though those women are exactly like you, but he sees them only in a context. When they are well-dressed, when they are looking gorgeous, that's the only time he's seeing them. But you, he's seeing you when you are not at your best. He's seeing those ones when they are at their best. A man can hate you for no reason. And you will kill yourself to, to try to be finding out, what did I do? What, the problem is with the man. The problem is not with you. So you must, you must understand that. A man can move mountain for you <laughs> just to get between your legs. A man can move mountain for you. A man can, can create a moment for you where he makes very great sacrifice. A man can travel distant for you. He can spend money you can't believe for you just to create that moment. Just to get between your legs. Please understand this as a woman. That is not a sign that is caring. That is not a sign that is loving. A man can move mountain for you. And yet he's doing all of that. Just to have you. Just to possess you. After he has possessed you. Then he now sees that. What is this after all? Then he gets tired of you. So don't get confused. When a man seems to be doing great things for you, the real man, the real man is the man that is Christ-like because Jesus is the real man. You remember that woman by the well in the book of John, I think chapter 4. Jesus said, go and call your husband. She said, I have no husband. Jesus said, you are right. You have had six husbands. And the one you are with is not your husband. But then Jesus engaged that woman. In the end, that woman made a great statement. She said, he went and said, I have found a man. That's the first time this man, woman is meeting a real man. You see, most women, their experience in life has been shaped by wrong men. Because they themselves, they, they choose wrong men. They go to wrong men. You see, if your life is not right with God, you are also going to attract a wrong man in your life. And then after attracting young man, wrong man, you will now begin to blame and say, men are evil, men are bad. That woman has had terrible life with six husbands until the day she met Jesus. So the only man that is a genuine man that does not have this attribute that I just discussed is a man that is Christ-like. He's a man that knows Jesus. The first question you should ask yourself when you meet a man is this. Does he know Christ? Is Jesus living in him? Can I see Jesus in him? That is the question. But what, what do you think most women ask? Is, does he love me? Does he have money? Is he ready to settle down? Those are the things you're asking yourself. The real question is this. Is this man living for Christ? The scriptures say in that he died. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. He died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves. But for him who died for them and rose again. A real man is a man that is living for Jesus. If you have not found a man living for Jesus, you have not found a man. So many of these misconceptions put women in trouble, leads women into wrong marriage. But I've come to share them with you today, particularly 
many of you who are young who have not made marital decision so that you don't make wrong decision and many of you who are married so that your heart can be at peace and know that some of these issues is they are not your problem after all it's not that you are not doing some things right i've seen women who are given everything they they literally have laid their life on the table for their husband and yet the husband doesn't value them they are dying for the man yet the man does not in any way value them you see the problem is not you my sister it's that man the only mistake you made was saying yes to a wrong man you see i pray for you every single lady that is watching this may you never say yes to a wrong man in the mighty name of jesus and so i want to invite you whether you are single or you are married to take our free bible marriage course we have two courses one for married people one for single people for married it is designed such that you can understand marriage and how to adjust yourself in marriage that you are already in based on the word of god for single you now want to learn about how to get it right you don't even want to make mistake we have designed two courses like that so all you need to do is just to send us an email just write us that you want to enroll for the married course and tell us whether you are single or married please it's very important that you state whether you are single or married because we have two courses so that we'll send you the right form now the address to uh send us message is bible love helper at gmail.com now that email address we are watching this on our youtube channel that email address will be in the description below just check the description below you'll find the email address you'll find our phone number all our social media handles they are also all available there the course is absolutely free and it is based entirely on the word of god so i invite you to enroll for this free bible marriage course today my name once again is olushe gumokolu God bless you.